Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience, Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 13th of April, 2022. Great to have you here. Topics that I've got on the agenda. I've sent a proposal to delay the LTS selection by two or four weeks. And um, that's one. Other UI improvements, we had put this on the list that there was a proposal out for some script security UI improvements. And then we usually like to allow a time slot that Jan and Tim could share what current things are going on. We also had a topic from Uli, but with Jan, Tim and Uli not here yet, I'd propose let's, let's spend some time on the first topics and see where we get from there. Any other topics that need to be put on the agenda? Okay, we can adapt the agenda as needed, but let's let's go with the topics we've got and uh, and continue the discussion there. So I had opened an email thread just a few hours ago. Sorry for the, the late start on it, but this email thread is proposing, oh good, and Alex, you've, oh, Alex, good is already very good, thank you. So I had started this, this discussion and I see Alex, you'd given us a reply. Maybe we, we take the time right here to have some discussion. The idea was that we've got more regressions in the current weekly releases than are typical for a, an LTS baseline selection. So my thought was we should intentionally choose to delay the LTS baseline selection while we work to resolve those regressions. And as we resolve them, then we can, we can choose the, the LTS baseline based on a weekly that has, has confidence for us. Alex, I hadn't yet read your reply, so maybe you can take us through what, what your observations were there. Oh uh, yeah, this is just what I quickly wrote down a few minutes ago. I've basically rearranged your list of issues into blocker major, minor and trivial issues with a short explanation how I experienced them. Because if I remember correctly, they're all labeled as major or blocker currently on Jira. So I went ahead and rearranged them here in the email thread. Good. Okay. So well, and and I think it's a this is a this is already a worthwhile conversation for us about, hey, how should for me the the one you put up as blocker is is well, in the sense that it makes the UI ugly because it, it actually doesn't stop me from using the product. It just renders really badly, and it's a very early page that I see this bad rendering on. So for me, that was the that was why this one, and I, I'm yeah, it was it was uncomfortable because of the bad rendering. I'm used to Jenkins usually looking orderly, consistent, if if not always pretty, it at least looks orderly and consistent. So so then you were noting on the these are let's see this is oh this this is the one that's the labels is that right the yeah the these are the drop down ones good okay good all right so again you and i are, are sort of agreed here that this one is is really uncomfortable right it's oh i lose functionality in some things yeah the issues outlined only affect the credentials plugin but i'm aware that the maven integration or the node label plugin for example are affected by it as well because they use the same drop downs here Right. Okay. And, and then, then your idea of this, the tooltips one, the reason I was so concerned about the tooltips one is that it's a, that's a place where the, it's without that hint, it's really hard to deal with. What does that cell mean that I'm clicking in that matrix of permissions and array of, of things? So, so, but I think I understand your point here that you you're saying, hey, maybe we don't don't delay the LTS. I think your your re revisit gives us a good indication. Should we consider how we how we classify these things and give ourselves regular status reports? Hey, here's how we're doing on these on the ones that are classified this way. Yeah, I think the metrics one is currently the only plugin that is labeled as as losing tooltips. 
I didn't find something else on Jira earlier. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't have such, such an older Jenkins release at hand at the moment to replicate it. But if I remember correctly, if you hover over the columns of the Matrix Auth plugin, you have tooltips what it does as well. So um, I'm not sure, at least I don't know out of my mind, which kind of tooltips actually are affected here. Okay, so so needs needs more discussion and more more investigation. I, I agreed, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, because the tooltips on the columns of the Matrix Auth plugin, like what each, each permission does, works fine. Okay, so so then the the next point of what I might call as disagreement would be the 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 broken icons thing. So share with us your your logic here, and let's let's talk some about it. Yeah, I think they are also labeled major on Jira, but I wouldn't say that is a major issue or actually a blocker because the plugins affected by it, like I said in the email post, do not use the API provided by Jenkins, but the actual path of the icon. So they look into slash SVGs slash or the 24, 24 or 48, 48 directory for the icon. Yeah. And Jan started the PR, I think in November last year. And around that time I started to migrate a few plugins away. According to my GitHub profile, I migrated over 70 plugins by now. And this is more a more an ongoing task, I guess rather than something you have to do before this can be shipped. I also published a blog post, of, uh, not blog post, um, upgrade guide about it on Jenkins IO, how to go about it in Groovy and in Jelly. So this is not something that is hard to migrate from. So then in this case, it would be a, 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 a situation where we identify things that have the issue and use the, the, the fact that they have the issue as a way of flagging, hey, this is one that if, if we don't, if this one, this plugin does not get a new release to include this change, then when it's, when this release, when the LTS comes available that does this, it will no longer display those icons. It, it will, because it was depending on non-API based icon access. Yeah. I have addressed these issues in a few other plugins as well, but I basically went the way to go through the repository permission updater, adopt the plugin, perform a release, and remove myself from it again. If it's a plugin from 2012 or 13 or something that is definitely not no longer maintained, this is as easy as updating the icon path to the API. Okay, good, good insight. So so now Basel and I were having, having conversations about this one in terms of, are there other alternatives for us? The tables to divs upgrade went through a similar process and it's been a rather painful experience in with, with 30 or 40 open bug reports currently on tables to divs. But I, I think you're right. We don't really want to resurrect an eight year old plugin just to make this change when we, we aren't confident it will matter to users. So there's a there's a a balance there that I'm not sure how to how to strike. I'm open to others' opinions and ideas or suggestions on it. Uh, so think, go on. on. Okay. Um my idea would be something like we didn't choose a LTS baseline yet, but once we have created the email thread and her and are on the step of the release candidate creation, we could highlight it and make sure people actually report these issues. So they can be addressed before the first official release lands in place. I think that would be one way to highlight it and give giving it extra attention. Because we can only take care of plugins which are on Jenkins CI and which are public private plugins must be addressed separately by the people themselves. Yeah, I think that's a good idea, but the risk we run there is that there aren't very many people necessarily running the weeklies, uh, and I think many people will not discover these bugs until the LTS is shipped, uh, which is something that I've noticed. Uh, you know, there, just recently we we found two issues that have been in weeklies for a very long time that were not noticed until they were delivered in an LTS release. So one of the things that I did in the Guava uh, migration was 
to proactively enumerate all of the plugins that were using the old Guava APIs. So I made a big list of them. And then from there, I was able to, once I had that entire list, I was able to go through them one by one and decide, is this something that we care about or not? And if we do care about it, then I opened a pull request to update the Guava usage. And if we didn't care about it, then you know, that went into a separate bucket where we explicitly decided that we're not gonna fix this. Uh, but I think it was important to actually go through them one by one and make that decision consciously rather than just waiting for a user to complain about it um, months or weeks later. Um, so I think that was, that was really a, a useful exercise that I did when I was doing the Guava work. Well, and now, Alex, you had noted that they weren't using the API. So is this a searchable, detectable condition? Like I've, I've seen cases where, where Felix did reports of bugs to, to plugins that were detected to be using tables that contained UI. Is this a similar kind of thing where it's feasible to search or does this require a human being to actually look for it? Uh, you can actually query cs.github.com for like having PNG or GIF or the typical older icon paths in a regex clause and use that as starting base. Okay, all right. So it is so it is a detectable thing. Good. Okay. So then as you had suggested, we could start tracking start tracking this thing in in Jira and say, all right, here's this, we know this issue exists, we know this one exists. And then then we've got the risk, yes, plugins that are abandoned may not get a fix, right? They but we at least we know then. Good. Okay. So, and Alex, would you be willing to coach on how to do those searches or is it, is it as simple as look for, look for PNGs or SVGs that have the, the 24 by 24 or 36 by 36 um, in, their, in their string? Yeah, I mean, it's the input is rather simple. You can either use the GitHub search or if you are in the technology preview, you can use cs.github for that and search all repositories on the Jenkins CI organization. And yeah, then you can take a look for the last SCM activity. And if it was in 2014, you can likely say the plugin is abandoned and rank it more down the list on the Jira. Excellent. Okay, so you say that was cs.github.io or cs.github.com? Yeah. Okay, thanks. All right. So that feels like a, a very reasonable approach to me. Let's let's set ourselves the objective that we're going to do a a, a, a detailed review. This I, I think this is a lot healthier than one of my thoughts was. Oh, should we just put all the pictures back? But <laughs> then the problem with putting all the pictures back is now we never know how to get rid of them, right? Whereas what what you've done this way, starting down the process, let's continue it and identify things that have the issue and then see if we can find people to help us work on them. Yeah, the process is rather simple. Behind the ease of migration is the Jenkins IO blog post. I linked there how to go about it to do it in Jelly and in Groovy. Didn't have a Java example at hand at the time right, of writing this, but like you can see the process is rather simple and doesn't require much work. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So that, that feels like we've got a, an idea here for that one. I like that one very much. Excellent. Okay. So, so pulling up to the higher level question, are there any strong objections to the idea that we should consider taking time to work on these regressions before we choose the, the LTS baseline? Am, am I missing something by, by not holding us to the rigorous cadence that next Wednesday we will choose an LTS baseline? Okay, I, I'm taking the silence as assent. That's a dangerous assumption. Are you all okay with me assuming assent? 
No, I, I agree, Mark. I mean, I think it's good to take the time to make sure that the selections that we have to choose from are all worthy selections with a low rate of regression. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think postponing it for a couple or maybe four weeks is fine. The RC creation of the last the three release isn't even up yet. So we have at least four more weeks until the first point release at, arrives. So yeah, giving us more than a plenty of time to address the outstanding blockers. Good, okay, it's excellent. So just the difference between the two weeks and four weeks, with two weeks, it just we reduce a bit the time, but we are keeping exactly the same schedule as usual. With the four weeks, we are delaying the next LTS version. See, and if we want I to was, speed up a bit the thing, so yeah, good. I was assuming that the two weeks was like a, a, that's a good point. I was assuming two weeks um, applied across all releases, all releases this this year. So. That was what I was assuming, um, but that may, if we go beyond two weeks, we now may have used up the, the cushion that we have. So the, the, the cadence is 12 weeks. So we use 48 weeks of the year, a week is 52 weeks. If we, if we use more than two weeks, we may actually spill over and, and risk that we end up doing a release late in December. I haven't run the calendar yet for that. So, so, Vadek's got a good point. What what does it mean? Just perhaps for us? do not care too much about the number of LTS per year. It's not that important. Ah, it's just okay. about the number of things that we are doing per year. It's not a big deal. What is more concerning is what we want to do. Do we want to postpone the LTS release or just the selection of LTS release? Because between the LTS selection, when we decide which weekly we are taking, it will influence the RC, the release candidate, and then the LTS. We have some times between the, the selection date and the first RC, it's four weeks. So if we are following the four weeks proposal there, we can do the release candidate the same day as the selection. Perhaps not a good idea. Perhaps it's better to delay the LTS release as well. It's just about this kind of thing that are also other options we have there. Good, good point. So my assumption was I was assuming that the delay applied to everything. So it was an intentional moving of the whole calendar. And it's a good point, Vadek, that we could choose something different. But for me, it was much easier to think about not attempting to take time out of other things. Any, Rob, just any... for the information there, the release candidate is also something where we are pushing the back port. So for security release, the backport of security release, in this case, it will not be a security release. But if you find some regression you want to correct, you have to backport them to the release candidate. Meaning if we are doing that the same day, it will be impossible. There will be no time to review the thing. If it's only two weeks, it means that we have only two weeks left for the release candidate to receive the backport. In the case, we don't want to change the LTS release time. If we want to just postpone everything, it's the same process as usual. It's just that the calendar needs to be updated, this kind of thing. But, um... Good, and, and my bias is do the calendar update without attempting to compress anything else. Are there others who have a different opinion there or who would lobby, no, we need, to, we need to, to do something else other than just move everything two weeks or four weeks later to, to allow us time to get a, a, a more stable weekly release. Okay, so I think, I think we'll continue discussion there. Discuss, continue discussion in the email thread. Certainly our release officer, Tim has to be has to be consulted. And so this is, this is not a decision. This is just um, a, a proposal and, and we, we work from that proposal. Any other refinements there that I need to be, need to be noting in the notes or that need to be expressed here? 
So perhaps if you want to have close to zero impact in the long term, we can propose to do a dot four release the next time and to have the next LTS being just dot one plus dot two. So a long time support of two months instead of three months. That could be another oh. approach. So that in six months, there will be no impact at all. I see what you're saying, right? So if if calendar cycles are somehow important, are, are important in ways we didn't realize, we could release 2.332.4 in June, and then could release, let's call it 2.35x. It's not gonna be that big, but let's call it that. One in July, then dot two in August, and then September is the next, uses a new baseline. Did I understand what you were saying, Vada? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Just to be clear, no strong opinion, just explaining the different options we have. Some right. potentially are better than others. So. Great. Okay, good. Anything else on this topic? Okay, then the other topics we had were rel relative to proposed pull requests for a script security improvement. Uh, I'm not sure anybody on this call has comments to make. Are there, I guess, Vadek, are there things with this one specifically that you would like to discuss here? Perhaps just add the date of the pull request. <laughs> it's a pretty <laughs> old one. Okay. So just for the information there, I don't know why the topic is coming there in the, in the meeting, but anyway, uh, that pull request is to improve a bit the user experience in script security, especially about the approval tab. The approval tab currently is mainly that you have to approve it once and the hash of the approved script will be stored, nothing else, no metadata. So you don't know where, when it was approved, why it was approved, by who, and so on. So with this pull request, you can see with the screenshot there, it's a new version where you have more information, more metadata to help the administrator to decide where they want to reduce the number of approval, to remove some approval in particular, and also, to have the possibility to revoke one approval or multiple. Currently, you have to remove everything. The other option is to go to the XML file and to remove the thing manually, which is not really a great experience. That's a bit the idea with that pull request. And the main issue is that we discovered the bug in the, um, the pipeline approval uh, logic. It's about the reapproval of things. You can uh, see the detail with the, the ticket we opened after that pull request. It's mainly a bug that is not occurring a lot in practice nowadays because of the lack of features. But with this new approach, we are revealing more than bu uh, that bug to the people. So that's a bit annoying. And that was the request to correct the bug before going forward with that pull request. That's a okay. bit the uh, summary, so, I would say. So there's more there. I thought one of Jesse's objections here was he wasn't confident that we wanted to do anything more on this because his preference is no one should ever approve any script, right? Am, am I overstating Jesse's case? I think not even even if. Uh, I think it's a, it's a regret from him to have the script approval feature in general. So mm, okay, because because this this truly does open some risk that now you're allowing certain certain forms of execution that may not be safe inside your Jenkins controller. Okay. All right, so I think that just stays as it is then. I'm not sure we need any, make any further progress there. Any other topics for today? I'm hesitant to talk anything about upcoming UI improvements without Jan and Tim here. And without Uli, I, his code coverage plugin work I think continues. I believe his students are active and he's working making progress. All right, if no other topics then, I'm gonna go ahead and propose we end the session and uh, I'll make a recording available within the next say 24 hours. Anything else that we need to discuss here today? Okay, thanks everybody. Just perhaps uh, one oh. point I forgot.
due to the situation we have nowadays, what I would propose is that we are stopping merging new features in Jenkins Core until we have a more stable solution, stable weekly, so that we do not have a new introduction of bugs, regression, while we are correcting the existing one. If we are not doing that and continue merging things, we are just in a situation where we cannot really stabilize the stuff. So just an idea there, probably be very careful if you merge something, it could add new regression that we have to correct. And due to the fact that we know that it's currently unstable, we have to correct a lot of regression. It could be better to not add new one, in a sense. That's a bit what we were doing in the past before a security release, to not introduce new thing, to prevent people to have the choice between stability and security. In this case, it's mainly between stability and features. So at the end, create the same. So prefer to delay new feature merges in favor of work on stabilization. Yeah, exactly. It does not mean that you cannot open new pull request, review pull request, but just it's about the merging of things, especially big pull request. That could be a bit annoying, I will say. Yeah, but to add, but to add on a bad request, that's actually a good idea that maybe needs to be expanded to further LTS selection to not pull in new features right before the next LTS baseline is selected to focus on stabilization and to not to introduce many issues in the first release of the next LTS candidate. That was a bit, I will say, implicit in the past. When we had the selection coming close, it was mainly we want to have at least that feature. So stop introducing new feature for the next weekly to be sure it was a bit stable. So your point is just not explicit in the doc, I think. But uh, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, good habits, I will say, in general. Good. Yeah. So make the current implicit behavior more explicit by documenting it, by describing it. And certainly we've had that, we've had that behavior, right? We see, we, we've seen tables to divs was merged into a weekly one or two weeks after LTS baseline was selected to give it maximum exposure. Likewise with the, the, the UI changes that came in 2.332 and the UI changes that are now, they each arrived just a week after LTS baseline was selected so that we had maximum exposure. So yeah, I, I think that's good. and. Let's we we can certainly describe it in more clear 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 terms if it's not already described there. Very good, thanks. Any other ob observations or points we need to include in the notes? All right. Oh, I've got a chat message here. Oh, great. Okay, good. All right. Thanks, everyone.